morning and thank you all for being here. This is an exciting day because we get a chance to celebrate a really big partnership that's going to do amazing things for our St. Paul and our Ramsey County residents. I tell people all the time that this work has to be a team sport, that what's more important than who your mayor is, what's more important than who your congress member is, what's more important than who your county commissioner is, is how your mayor your Congress member and your county commissioner are working together on your behalf. And so today we get to make an announcement that is the product of people working across jurisdictions, people working across lines to say, we can deliver more for our city by putting our resources together, by putting our thoughts together, by putting our efforts together than we can separately. And so we are here to celebrate a partnership primarily between the city and the county and a whole bunch of partners, uh, local partners, that would not have happened, that could not have happened without the incredible support of our Congress member, of our federal delegation, and of the Biden and Harris administration in Washington, DC. I'm very pleased to, that we're here to announce our Earn and Learn partnership through which, and you'll be hearing a lot more details about this, but the goal is to invest heavily in our young people. We have learned that we've inherited what we think of as kind of a broken model of city building that essentially says, defines a city as a collection of streets and buildings. We know that St. Paul is a collection of people and families. And so our goal is to invest directly in our young people. It's to invest directly in our businesses, to invest directly in our entrepreneurs of all ages. There's a six-year-old entrepreneur in this room as we speak who was just telling me about his business model. I can't share it with anyone who has not signed the non-disclosure agreement. But we're excited to be here. I want to just thank and really, really appreciate our partners at the county who have worked really, really hard to put this work together. I want to thank and appreciate our partners uh, at St. Paul, uh, whether that's our right track, our full stack initiatives, uh, who work hard to make sure that uh, we're creating opportunity in our city and that the opportunity that we're creating in our city uh, is, is, is just and equitable. Uh, so I want to say thank you. I know you'll, you'll hear from them, but I know uh, Ling Becker's in the room. It's great to see you. Our uh, Parks and Rec director, Andy Rodriguez, is in the room. It's great to see you. Um, and uh, it's always wonderful to see my Congress member, Betty McCollum, who is here. And she's always working on our behalf. You'll hear from her. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to introduce, uh, well, she used to be my rep, and now she is our county commissioner, and that's Ramsey County Commissioner Rena Moran. Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Again, my name is Serena Moran. I'm Ramsey County Commissioner of District 4. I am the lead workforce development liaison for the county board, and I'm leading on, on the ongoing collaboration between the city and the county. It is often easy to say, to talk about partnership, but this effort is a true demonstration or what happens when multiple entities invest together and work together with our community-based organization and community members. This is big. I want to thank our congressional partner, Representative Betty McCullen, for her work and support on this initiative, who you'll be hearing from next. Thank you to the city and our mayor for your partnership with the county. It is often easy to talk about partnership, but this effort is a true demonstration of what happens when multiple entities, again, I just need to reiterate that, invest together and work together with our community-based organizations and our community members. Our local learn and earn providers who are anticipating on serving 700 young residents. That's a true impact. The African American Economic Development Solution, the Asian Economic Development Association, Bridge Makers, and Spark Y, who will all be providing training in entrepreneurship. The Center for Environment and Energy, providing hands-on training for a career as installation to the HIV VAC installer. I need one of those right now. 
Goodwill, Easter Sale, providing, in, uh, providing construction training. Merritt Community Service providing training in entrepreneurship and human services. Minnesota Training Partners providing healthcare training. And in partnership with health partners who, and with employers, we cannot do this important work and be successful. We need employers who understand the need to invest in our young people. We also have New Vision Foundation and Hack the Gap, providing training in informational technology. Tree Trust, providing training in tree care and landscaping. And Twin City Rise, that will provide diesel technician training. Wow. So many of you who are here today, we are so very, very grateful for each and every one of you. These investments align with our county's strategic priority of intergenerational prosperity for racial and economic inclusion. And it aligns to our county's economic competitiveness and inclusion plan. Investing in learn and earn programs was one of the critical recommendations in the plan that currently serves as our economic development framework. We are excited. We are so excited to see the amazing impact that these, investing, these investments would do to our young residents and what that would bring to all of us in Ramsey County. So thank you so much. And with that, I would like to introduce my friend, our and my congressional leader, congressional leader, Representative Betty McCullen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, I am happy and I want to thank uh, for those of you who extended uh, a welcome for us to be part of this announcement. Uh, I was very proud to work and pass the American Rescue Plan. It was a plan for essential emergency funding package during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that package brought much needed funds to help our communities uh, weather the storm, and to land on our feet, and to look how we can move forward coming out of this pandemic. It's easy to forget bad things that happened in the past. We are here today without wearing masks. Well, unless you're super sensitive to the Canadian wild smoke, uh, you might have one on. But we've come a long way, but we're still in the recovery phase. For the nonprofits who are here, would you please raise your hands? And let's give them a round of applause. When we started working on the American Rescue Plan in, uh, in Congress, everybody was worried about small businesses. We were worried about essential workers, essential services, and we wanted to make sure that they stayed whole. And I uh, work a lot with the nonprofit community. Minnesota's a leader nationally in nonprofits. And I said, where is the support for the nonprofit community in this bill? And it was like, well, small businesses. So without the work that went into uh, the American Rescue Plan, we would not have the vibrant, hardworking nonprofits that are going to be carrying out these fabulous programs. So I'm so glad that you're included uh, not only in the money that's, that's moving forward, that was our intent and goal, but that you were included to bring your ideas and your strengths to this. As the mayor said, uh, you know, a city's not about buildings and it's not about the roads, but I do wanna take a second for all of us to just look out these windows behind me. You see the buildings of the past, my grandparents and my great-grandparents, and then we stand in a building of the present. And we're here today talking about the workforce of the future who will be working in these buildings to keep St. Paul vibrant, to keep St. Paul as a community that's strong and thriving, and a community that's inclusive. Something that I'm having to fight for in Congress right now is to keep inclusivity, um, racial equity into workforce programs, if you can believe that. They're under attack right now. But let's talk about the present. The present is Minnesota 
has received $8.5 billion. And in that, I worked hard with others in the House, and I know you'll hear from my Senate colleagues, representatives, to have money go directly to the city because cities know what their communities need better than the federal government and sometimes better than the whole state of Minnesota. So um, AARPA is delivering for Minnesota today, and I want to commend the collaboration that takes place in the 4th Congressional District between the federal, the state, the local, and that includes city and county, as well as the nonprofit community coming together to make something meaningful happen, not only for the present, but something meaningful for the future. So to the young adults who will be receiving training here, you are my future. I make no mistake that I work for you to provide you the same opportunities that were afforded me uh, to um, grow and prosper as a human being. And now, even as a member of Congress, I didn't get to Congress alone. I got to Congress because I had a whole community of people that I never met who invested in my schools, who invested in housing, and invested in opportunity and gave me hope for a brighter future. And now it's our job, Your Honor, Ms. Moran, I almost called you rep, you were my rep too. <laughs> Um, as well as my Senate colleagues. It's our honor to do that work with you and to do that work for you. And please give us feedback on how we collectively can do more to make a brighter future for the, for the future workforce here in St. Paul. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jody Niehoff, and I serve as uh, Senator Klobuchar's Deputy State Director. Usually, I'm like the behind-the-scenes person, so it's uh, it's such an honor um, to be here to represent the senator. Um, you know, I am a St. Paul resident, and thank the commissioner. You know, Mayor Carter is my, 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 my mayor, and certainly Representative McCollum, and um, I could gush about them. Uh, I'm also a, a daughter of a teenage mom who um, didn't have like these great partnerships that are happening today. And like if I could have had those opportunities that are happening in the city of St. Paul and in, within Ramsey County, I mean, it's, it's transformative. But um, I am here to read a letter on behalf of the senator, and I just want to commend everyone and, and um, it's just so inspiring, and I'm chat chatting with people. It, um, it's a very exciting opportunity. Dear friends, thank you for the invitation to join you today for the announcement of the Learn and Earn a, uh, Young Adult Employment Program. Though my schedule pre prevents me from being with you in person, I commend and thank Ramsey County, the City of St. Paul, and all the community partners for your innovative efforts and your commitment to expanding access to career opportunities for youth and young adults in the workforce. Investing in our young people and our workforce is critical to our state's prosperity. And with the support through the federal investment and these local partnerships, the Learn and Earn program will expand training and resources to ensure young adults and job seekers can access the tools they need to begin and advance their careers. The 13 new programs provide workers with paths to the good paying, uh, in-demand careers in construction, in healthcare, energy, information technology, entrepreneurship, just to name a few. As your partner in Washington, I will continue to strongly advocate for workforce development and employment opportunities in our state. I lead two bipartisan bills, the American Apprenticeship Act and the Apprenticeship to College Act, to increase participation in registered apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship programs that allow workers to earn college credit for completed programs. I've also introduced the Freedom to Invest in Tomorrow's Workforce Act, which would allow workers to use 529 tax advantage education saving accounts for skills training and credentialing programs. And I am working across the aisle to support programs like these so that Minnesotans can, Minnesotans can have the freedom to live and work with dignity and advance their careers and futures. Thank you, thank you again to all the community partners, Mayor Carter, the Ramsey County Board of Commissioners, Representative McCollum, and to all of you for your partnership and cooperation. I look forward to hearing about your great work in progress, and I am proud to serve you in the United States Senate. Sincerely, Amy Klobuchar, United States Senator. And um, I have the privilege and honor to now introduce um, uh, 
Emma Corey, who is the president and CEO with Twin City Rise. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Emma Corey, and I have the honor and privilege of leading Twin Cities Rise, rooted in North Minneapolis, but working across the metro with folks making that journey to overcome great obstacles and achieve financial independence. Thank you for your support today in building our presence and impact in St. Paul. Thank you to Ramsey County and to the city of St. Paul. I have to call out Ling Becker. You are a leader. You are a leader that, that believes in boots on the ground. Today, this is happening because of you and Senior Commissioner Carter, currently Com uh, Commissioner Moran, uh, for making, for listening to our community, uh, community organizations about what our youth need and creating a program and a strategy that is a response to that feedback. Thank you for listening to the community business, community-based um, organizations that are in the room. I speak on their behalf. Thanks to Commissioner Maris Castillo, Freetham, McGuire, Moran, Ortega, Zhang, and Reinhardt. I know it's hard to make these come to fruition, but you have put $10 million into the community and into our youth. Thank you for that. As community-based organization, I commit to you on, our, on behalf of our partners, please, if you continue to listen, we will give you feedback so that we can create programs that reach our youth, that hold our youth accountable, but walk the journey with them when life is really hard. To the youth in the room, give yourselves a pat on the back for speaking up. You have informed this program. You have said, I cannot put life on hold because the bills don't stop when I need to learn a new career. Twin Cities Rise, partnering with Austin, thank you for your, uh, for your confirmation today at St. Paul College for being our partner in the Diesel Tech. We will teach you skills and we will support you along the journey. A shout out to Alex Merritt on our team, VP of Program Operations, that is creating this program. It will be informed by community. It will be informed by our youth. These programs started with the Minnesota Trucking Association. A shout out to Meredith Armstrong, John House Laden, partners that I worked with at the state that have been in, in, instrumental in shaping the diesel tech program. Youth will get paid 17 to $22 an hour. You will need to show up at class. You will need to come get those boots. You will need to come and deliver on the online assessments or in-person classes. But we will walk the journey to $17 to $22 jobs because Ling and partners like that are helping connect us to employers like Ream Companies, Blaine Brothers, Nuss Truck and Equipment, Universal Truck Service, Allstate Peterbilt, Walters Recycling and Refuse, Dart, Wayne Transports, and Manning Transfer. Also, Mindat, my last employer, and Metro Transit hire diesel technicians. If you want a stable job with the state or with the county or with the city, this is a program for you. Youth, please share the news. TwinCitiesRise.org. We need your help to build enrollments in this class. On behalf of the community, I want to say thank you to my partners because we'll be working together to support and serve our, our youth. Thank you for this opportunity, Ling. I, I, need, I need to introduce our next speaker, and that is um, Mr. Stevens from uh, Bridge Makers. Thank you for the ama amazing work that you do with our youth. Hello, everybody. It really is amazing to be here. My name is Cole Stevens. I am the co-founder, chief impact officer of Bridge Makers. I am a youth advocate and entrepreneur, um, and at this point, an adoptive resident of St. Paul. And uh, you know, this actually really is a special moment for me. Um, I, I just, I have to give some shout outs. I'm a young person, that's what we do. I'm 21 years old and I'm up here right now, and it's special because I've been, thank you, thank you. 
I have been poured into by this community in a way that I never thought even possible. Ling Becker at the county, Mary Rick at the city, even like Dario on the ground in the community, our congressional delegation, the mayor from the city of St. Paul, the leaders here in the East Metro are incredible. And they're working across jurisdiction, lines of difference to really, really make a historic investment after a historic pandemic. So as we know, young people have had it tough in this pandemic. They already had it rough. Our inadequate systems were already failing young people and causing the root cause of issues like violence, miseducation, addiction, and young people were not getting the investment they needed to really succeed. And this is how we combat that. Folks, during the pandemic, young people were getting laid off. They were unemployed in a world where they were just trying to go to school and do things right. And through all the change of the most historic pandemic and the most uncertain time of those young people's, a lot of the adults in here's lives, they were just trying to manage the change and do things right, show up to school, support their family, the likes. And uh, I was one of those young people. I had gotten laid off from my job as I was supporting my family, didn't have any money to pay the rent. And it wasn't until I stopped just trying to manage the change and do things right, but I started trying to lead change and do the right things. And that's when I found out 20,000 other young people in the state of Minnesota had also been laid off from their job and barred from unemployment by our law system. And we got that law changed and got over $35 million out to those young people. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget it. I never rest on my laurels too wrong, uh, too long because uh, Ling Becker actually called me. She got a hold of me. We talked a little bit. And uh, we were like, okay, yeah, we won on unemployment. That's great. Now it's time to win on employment. It's time to win on ownership, investment, entrepreneurship. It's time to win on building a more inclusive and just economy for our young people here in the East Metro. And that's what this investment from the ARPA dollars is all about. So everybody, I really was one of those young people that needed the investment and now working here with these incredible people, uh, um, it, it really being poured into, I can see the future and it's bright. And so I did the work with Ling and at Bridge Makers of really bringing young people together from the county to figure out what fields and what things, what investments we needed to make. And that's why we're here today to announce the Earn and Learn program. And I just wanna say, if you are one of those young people, like I was, and if you know those young people, a parent's a one, go ahead and go to bridgemakersmn.org forward slash fellowship and go ahead and sign up for this work and this fellowship to invest in our young entrepreneurs, right? So we're not just investing in filling jobs, but we are creating jobs. We are really investing in our young people where a seed planted and their capacity today will bear fruits for a generation. So folks, I'm here to say that the people in the East Metro doing this incredible work are not just here to manage change, but they are here leading change and they are doing the right thing. So join us, come on, let's win on employment. Thank you. Well, I hate to try to come after that, but I do want to acknowledge and thank Salia Tucker from uh, Senator Smith's office, who's here with us as well. Um, our, uh, like I said, our federal delegation uh, is always in touch with us. They are always working with us. They're always engaging with us. Uh, our uh, Senator Klobuchar, Senator Smith, uh, Congressmember McCollum, we are very, very fortunate to have you all in Washington, D.C., working on St. Paul's behalf. Please give them a round of applause. We also have to acknowledge the space that we're in today. Uh, this incredible building, this Osborne building, has become very much a hub uh, for innovation, a hub for ideas, a hub for building uh, incredible things in St. Paul. Uh, you know, we, uh, I I'll admit, it was a, a revelation to me when I was running for mayor, just how much innovation happens here, just how much entrepreneurship happens in this community, just how many amazing ideas are launched from St. Paul. So it's incredible for us to have a space like this that can be that sort of uh, ideation water, watering hole. So uh, it's great. Thank you for, uh, to Osborne 370 team for hosting us here uh, today. I wanna appreciate that. Um, and then the final thing I'll say, it's you know um, looming over us. Just this morning on the way here, I probably got the same news that you got. Uh, in our nation's capital, 
we saw our United States Supreme Court rule against affirmative action today. And so the work that we're doing together with our federal partners, with our county partners, and with all those nonprofit folks who raised their hands when we asked for nonprofit folks uh, to raise their hands, this work is critical. The, 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 the 700 young people who we're going to create opportunities for through this program, the, the, the families, the businesses, are folks who have seen all of their lives and even before that. But many of us, all of our parents' lives and all of their parents' lives, systems built against us, systems are built intentionally to work against the type of opportunity, democratized, equitable opportunity that we're talking about here today. I am honored to be in a city. I'm honored to be in a state. I'm honored to be in a country where we know that nothing will stop us from continuing to march forward towards equitable opportunity in our community. So thank you all for being here. Any questions?